All right. So welcome again to the Yoga Cafe. Today you'll need a chair and then a floppy pillow or even a folded up towel or blanket would work. And we're going to begin in a seated position, whatever comfortable seated position works for you. You could be sitting in your chair or on the floor. But take a moment to notice your posture, where your feet are, where your legs are, your hips, your spine, your head, your shoulders, and even your hands. And then once you have attuned to your posture in this moment, begin to notice your breathing. And ideally, we want to be breathing through the nose. Take a few breaths and see if you can work out a very smooth rhythm, kind of like the ocean rolling up on the beach and then rolling back. Today, we're going to be working with this kind of movement of energy, not just a breath, not just a body, but of energy. And we can move energy in several different ways, uh, doing very gross movements with the body. We can do some breathing, which will help to move energy. We can do some gentle uh, brushing of the body or massaging of the body. And then we can also move energy through visualization. So we're going to explore all of those things today. And there may be times when moving the body in big ways really serves you. You know, you've got a, a strong feeling or urge to move. Uh, I feel that way a lot of times when, if, when I've got some frustration. Um, or there may be times when a smaller movement or no movement is appropriate, like if you're really fatigued. So it's good to have all of these things in your toolkit. All right. And when we talk about moving energy in a subtle way, so not using the whole body, we're really um, exploring how the hands can kind of direct energy in different parts of the body. So because the hands play such an integral role in moving energy, we're going to begin to move energy out of the hands. So you might take a few breaths now, just noticing how your hands feel, the fingers, palms, wrists. Just be aware of what they're like and turn the palms over and look at the color of your, your hands, right? The amount of circulation that your hands are receiving right now. So we're gonna use that just as a, a quick reference uh, when we're done moving energy, just to see how things have maybe shifted. So the basic pattern for today is gross to subtle. So we're gonna be moving the body parts and then we'll brush the body parts. And then towards the end of practice, we will do some visualization to move the energy through the body parts, okay? So we're going to begin with the hands, as I mentioned, and let's start moving them by just shaking them out. Notice that you're keeping your fingers very relaxed. The movement is really coming from tension in the forearms, maybe even in the upper arms a little bit, but not coming from tension in the fingers. The fingers stay very loose and relaxed. Okay. All right. And then from here, we're going to do four movements for the hands. I'll scoot a little closer so you can see this. First one is really opening the palm wide so that the skin of your palm is nice and taut. So we're calling that web, like our webbed footed friends. And then we're going to bring the thumb and the index fingers together like a beak. Okay, and you'll feel that stretching the back of the hand. And then we're gonna pull 
all the upper knuckles back, but keep the skin of the palm taut. Yeah, so from the side, it looks like this. This is a claw, like a bear claw. And then we'll bring everything into a fist and we'll call that a paw, like your cat or your dog. So we'll do those four movements, web, beak, claw, paw, web, beak, claw, paw, web, beak, claw, paw. One more time, web, beak, claw, paw. And then just shake out the hands again. So you might look at your palms and notice uh, some difference in the circulation, in the color of your hands, or maybe you don't notice that yet, that's fine. All right, so now we're going to bring the wrists together. And it's a little bit like you were wearing some magnetic bracelets, let's call them that, magnetic bracelets. Just start to roll around your wrists and notice I'm not letting my fingers touch any other finger, even if it's the finger of its own hand. I'm keeping the fingers nice and apart, okay? And then from here, we're going to bend the elbows, point the fingers in towards your heart, then up, then forward, roll around. In, up, forward, roll around. So keep those fingers separated from each other. And you'll start to notice this gets into the, the fingers, the wrists, the elbows, a little bit of the shoulders. Okay, and then the next time the hands point forward, pause and reverse, if you can. A little bit of a brain yoga practice there. Once you get the rhythm, then refine it, making sure that the fingers aren't touching each other. Okay, and then I'm gonna challenge you. So continue to make that movement, but separate the hands a little bit. Fingers are still not touching. And then separate the hands a little more. You might start to feel like you're, you're doing some Hawaiian dancing. And then maybe the hands go as far out as the sides. Does it feel like you're spiraling at the forearms and the upper arms? And then is it possible to go the other way? Maybe, maybe not. Let's just do one more like that. Hands might be getting tired here. And then bring the palms together. Ooh, if you... If you bring your hands close but not touching, you might feel some intense heat there or a little sense of stickiness. That's the energy moving. All right, so palms together, let your thumbs come close to your chest and then lift your chest towards your thumbs and then lace your hands and extend the arms forward, pulling the upper back open. So that's a little bit of a rounding. Then turn your palms away from you and reach the arms up, lengthening. And then release the lace of your hands and circle the arms back, down, and around. And we're gonna do those four movements together. So thumbs at the chest, lift the chest, and then lace your fingers, extend your arms round your back. Turn your palms, reach the arms overhead, lengthen your sides, and then circle the arms back, down, and around. Let's inhale as we bring the palms together, lift the chest. Exhale as we lace the hands in round the upper back. Then inhale, turn the palms and reach them overhead. And exhale, circle the arms back and down. And again, inhale. 
Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Let's do all of that one more time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And then just let your hands rest. Pause. You could turn your palms to face up, noticing if there's any change in the appearance of your hands. So now we're going to do the practice, but instead of moving the body a whole lot, we're, we'll be brushing. So we're gonna be brushing and addressing the hands and the arms. So we're going to start by uh, pulling and tossing excess or unwanted chi. So if I start with my thumb, I'm going to pull along the sides of my thumb. At the end, I grab that excess or unwanted chi and I toss it into the floor. And when you toss, you want that unwanted chi to go all the way down through the floor into the earth to be recycled by the earth. So we do one swipe along the side and then we do one swipe top and bottom. So where the thumbnail is. And then we do that on the index. Toss, toss, and then middle. You, you can see how this pattern goes, right? So it's a little bit like, I notice I do this when I'm drawing my hands with the towel. It's a little bit like that, where you're just getting into the sides and the front and back of the finger. Okay. And then once you're done with that, you're going to brush from the pinky side up to the elbow and then down the inside of the forearm off the thumb and pull and toss. So pinky, elbow, thumb, toss. Pinky, elbow, thumb, toss. So now we're collecting the excess chi, unwanted chi from the forearm, wrist, and the whole hand. Okay, getting rid of that. And then because we're still here on this side, let's go all the way up to the shoulder and then back down. Maybe there's some excess unwanted chi hanging out in the upper arm. And notice I'm not using a, like bad chi or stagnant or, or anything like that. This is just unwanted. Don't need it right now. All right, let's go to the other side. So it's pinky, elbow, thumb, toss. Pinky, elbow, thumb, toss. I have to be careful. My second side, I always tend to rush. So I'm really focused on ah, getting rid of that, clearing it away. And then maybe come all the way up to the shoulder. Yeah. Okay, once more, one more pass and then pause. Okay, and then we're going to add, even though we didn't do much um, physical movement for this area, we're going to add um, a brushing that we've done before called the 10 dragons. So if you're wearing glasses, you'll wanna take those off. And in this one, your fingertips are gonna start just above the eyebrows come up over the forehead, up over the scalp. So my hands are following this kind of parallel track. And then they come down to the occiput, that shelf at the back of the skull. At the occiput, you're gonna pull the chi off, the unwanted excess chi, and toss it. So it's up, over, pull, toss. And I like to think of this as whatever thoughts, 
stories or plans that I'm getting really obsessive about, that's what I am pulling off and tossing because I don't need it. I want my mind to be clear and not gummed up, not congested with one thought or one story. Okay, once more. Oh, okay, good. All right, so now we're going to move into movement again. So we'll come back to movement. And this time we're going to move through the torso and spine. So in order to do that, if you were sitting in the chair, I think it would be wise to separate your feet so that the your feet are flat to the floor. If you're sitting on the floor, you know, just make sure that you've got enough propping so that you feel very stable. So hands to your thighs, just begin to circle your torso around your hips. I like to do the first few passes very slowly as I gather information about my hips and my spine. And sometimes it even talks back to me. <laughs> okay, then go the opposite direction. Whenever you're ready. One more time around, and then we'll reverse direction again. All right, so you'll go that first direction again, but this time, see if you can move the rib cage without rotating, without moving the head. So head stays still, and it's just the rib ribs that are rolling around in a circle. See if you can find that. It's a much smaller movement and it'll be more concentrated along the spine, not so much into the hips perhaps. And then let's go the other direction, stirring the pot. Okay, and then come to center and let's place the hands on the thighs and just let the ribs swing forward and back, almost like the seat of a swing on a playground. And the arms, your arms are like the braces of the swing set. So if you look at my side, right, I'm going back. We did that earlier and then I'm going forward with the palms. So we're just rocking back and forth. And you can do this with any breath rhythm that is comfortable for you. For me particularly, I like inhaling forward and exhaling back, but you may feel more comfortable with a different breath rhythm. So that's up to you. Last one. and then come to center. Just notice how that feels. All right, one more movement here before we shift to the brushing. So this is going to start off as a side bend. If you're sitting on the floor, you may wanna place your hand on the floor. If you're in the chair, you'll probably wanna have your forearm or your hand on your thigh, just to make sure that you feel stable and comfortable. The other hand is gonna go behind your head. And what I want you to feel is the beginnings of a stretch along the side body. So from the armpit towards the hip. And if you don't yet feel that stretch, 
you're welcome to point the elbow a little bit behind you. So it almost feels like you're trying to rotate towards the wall behind you. Usually just that small little adjustment will give you that access to the side body. So take a breath in. And then on your next exhale, twist so that your elbow points towards the floor. So inhale, elbow towards the ceiling or maybe the wall behind you. Exhale, elbow towards the floor. And just slowly go back and forth. Your range of motion may be different than mine. Stay within what is working for you. I want you to feel something here, feel a stretch, feel a, a shift somewhere in your physical body. But I don't want you to get so involved that you end up um, moving into pain. Okay, so no, no new pain, please. Last one. And then you'll point the elbow up towards the ceiling again and slowly come back up to center, bringing your hand down, and just pausing to feel the difference between your two sides. And when you're ready, come to the second side. So either placing the hand on the floor or forearm on your thigh, wherever that, that um, supporting hand is, make sure that it's very supportive. Other hand comes behind your head. And just notice that side bend. Maybe you get it a little quicker on this side, or maybe you need to do a bit more of that twisting the elbow towards the wall behind you. Inhale, and then on your next exhale, point your elbow towards the floor. Inhale, pointing the elbow towards the ceiling. And exhale, pointing the elbow towards the floor. Go back and forth that way at your own pace, your own rhythm, and your own range of motion. Okay, one last time. And then point the elbow back up towards the ceiling and come back to center and pause, noticing how that feels. If you are seated in the chair and the feet are wide, go ahead and bring your feet back towards each other. All right, now we're, we'll come into the brushing part of the practice. And remember, we were focusing our physical practice on the torso, right? Hips up to the shoulders. So we're going to uh, concentrate our brushing in that area as well. So we'll start hands below the breasts and then cross the hands as they come up Sorry, I forgot, I need to move my mic. Cross the hands as they come up through the center of your chest and then over the top of your chest, down the sides, and then along the bottom. So you're not going all the way to the belly, right? It stays on the ribs. And you're just moving all the way around the chest. I like to start in this direction, and you'll see why in a moment. But technically, you could go in either direction. Okay, last one. And then let's reverse. So we'll go over the top, cross down the center, under the bottom. Up the sides, over the top, down the center across the bottom. And you'll notice that there's a bit of movement with the shoulders here too. And maybe your shoulders are talking to you about that or have some kind of opinion about that. So this, even though it's a brushing action, it's also moving the body. Okay, 
Let's do that one more time. And then to move to the next area, I'm gonna come closer so you can see this. You're gonna take your hands and one over the other, start to brush down the center line of the body, almost like you're brushing crumbs off your shirt. When you reach the navel, pause. Shift your hands to your low back. And then it may be, especially if your shoulders are tired, it may be more comfortable to turn your palms out. But what we're going to do is just massage around the kidney area. So you might need to lean forward and round your back a little to feel that kidney area. This is not a deep tissue, not a lot of pressure. This is meant to just be very uh, gentle and uh, just a loving touch. Okay. And then we'll rest the hands and the shoulders. Whew, and just pause for a moment, feeling how that is. Now we're going to bring our attention down to the legs. So I'm going to shift back again so that you can see me. My whole leg. Oh, maybe not. That may be helpful. Okay. So if you're sitting on the floor, you're going to extend your legs straight out in front of you with a little bit of space between your two legs. If you're in the chair, you'll probably want to lean back against the, the back edge of your chair and have the legs out in front of you, heels on the floor. And let's just begin to circle the ankles around. I like to keep my knees soft here and they start to take on the same circling motion that the feet are doing. Spread the toes. And then let's go the opposite direction. Okay, now we're gonna go back to that first direction and we're gonna slide the heels in, knees open, legs forward, rotate inward. So slide the heels forward and back as you are rotating the ankles. And the knees, the knees and the hips too. So it's a little bit more of a full leg motion. It starts to look like a frog swimming in water. And then once you get the hang of that, try reversing. It's a little easier to do on the floor than in a chair. That's why we're leaning back, to get the legs involved. But this is really good for warming up the ankle, knee, and hip joints, kind of all at the same time. Once more. Okay. And then if you are seated on the floor, you can um, just set, extend the legs with the feet a little bit apart. And if you're in the chair, step your feet a little bit wider than your hips and the knees bent. Just pause there for a moment, feeling into your feet, your shins, your knees, your, your thighs, your hips, wherever else you're feeling it. Okay. And then we're going to come into a practice of using isometric contraction. So this is going to bring a lot of blood flow to the area of the hips. Um, it's really important that you don't hold your breath during this practice. So you'll just start by taking the hands on the inside of your knees. And if you're on the floor, you can do this in the butterfly position, bottoms of the feet together, knees open. So hands on the inside of the knees. And the hands are going to try to push the knees apart, 
but the knees are going to push back against the hands and you'll hold that for several breaths. So on the video, it doesn't look like I'm doing anything, but really my arms are engaged, my legs are engaged, and I'm breathing. You might even get a spike in temperature here, a little, little heat buildup, and then release. And then let's bring the hands to the outside of the knees. Same thing, hands are now trying to push the knees together, but the knees are resisting. And it's a little bit like a tug of war. And you're just holding that there, but not holding the breath. And then release. And let's do the inside one more time. Hands to the inner knees, push against the hands, hands push back against the knees. and release, and last time, hands to the outer knees. And release. Okay, lean back on your hands again. Knees are bent, feet to the floor, and the feet about hips width apart, and just let the knees sway a little bit side to side. And then if you're on the floor, you can extend your legs and kind of bounce the backs of the thighs. If you're in the chair, you can just kind of run the feet. <laughs> and then pause. Okay, so that is our, our physical, our gross practice uh, working with the legs. Now we're going to come into a more subtle practice using the hands to move energy, right? So we'll start by just brushing the hands around the outside of the hips. Just light touch like you've been doing. And then let your hands come down the outer thigh. Oh, I forgot. This over here. Outer thigh, outer knee, cross the bottom of the knee, up the inner knee, up the inner thigh, belly, outer hip, outer thigh, outer knee, bottom of the knee, inner knee, inner thigh, belly. So down the outside, across, then up the inside and over. Down the outside, across, up the inside and over. And you'll notice that we're pausing at the knees. It's a kind of natural um, breaking point or, or stopping point. And if it is not appropriate for you to bend in half, then you're welcome to continue to just do this to the knee. Otherwise, next time you bring the hands down past the knee, come down the outer leg, outer shin, down to the pinky toe, brush your hands off the pinky toe and toss, okay? Just like we were doing with the hands. And then bring your hands to the big toe, inner ankle, inner shin, inner knee, inner thigh, belly over the top, outer leg, off the little toe, brush and toss, up the big toe, inner leg, over the belly, okay? So it goes down the outside of the leg, little toe and toss, up the big toe, inner leg. And then we can connect this with the breath, exhaling as you go down and toss, inhaling, as you come up, exhaling as you go down and toss, inhaling as you come up. So this is an, a lovely one that you could do kind of any time of the day, but I find it really useful at the end of the day. If I forget and I get in bed, because I can do this standing as well, but if I forget to do it before I get in bed, then I'll just bend my knees and and do the practice while I'm in bed. Let's do this one more time. And then slowly come back up, 
just to a neutral sitting position and pause for a moment, feeling any tingles or pulses. Feel that movement of blood, movement of energy, that reminder. Yes, you are indeed alive. Okay, so we're going to come up to standing now. You'll get yourself there however you do. And uh, we'll come into Tadasana or mountain pose. We're going to be doing some sun salutations and I'm demonstrating using a chair. You don't have to use the chair, but it is a nice uh, guide every now and then, kind of play with. So if you are using your chair, you're going to stand in front of the seat of the chair. So you're facing it with your feet, hips width apart, feet parallel to each other, toes spread wide if you can get them. And then press down with your feet and up with the top of your head, shoulders draw, drawing down your back and arms down by your sides. So feel this um, slight tension through the legs and through the spine. And it's almost as if there were a string attached to the very top of your head and you're being slightly um, pulled upward. So you're resisting gravity in other words. Okay, now I'm going to turn forward. You don't have to. You can continue facing the chair. I just want to show you. On the next inhale, please let your arms float up like there are helium balloons attached to your wrists. And then when you're ready to breathe out, bring the hands back down by your sides. So just go back and forth that way at your own pattern of breathing, your own range of motion. Notice that the arms are very passive. This isn't a, a super muscular version of this movement. It's good to know that you can do lots of different ways, variations of moving. So this way you're moving as if you're moving through water, just really slowly, buoyantly, now, wherever you are, the next time you exhale, instead of bringing the hands down by your sides, fold in half towards your chair. Or if you're not using the chair, you can simply bring your hands to your shins. And then on your next inhale, look towards the back of the chair or forward in front of your toes. And then exhale, look towards your legs. Hands come to your thighs. Inhale, push off your thighs, rise up, arms float up, and then exhale the arms float down by your side. So it's at your rhythm, your pace, your range of motion, but that's the movement we're going to do several times. Just getting the whole body involved, folding on the exhale, inhale, reaching the top of the head forward, hips back, and then exhale, folding again, hands to your thighs, inhale, push off the lap, reach the arms, and then exhale, you float back down. Let's do two more rounds like that, inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. So let this be your last round.
Once the arms are back down by your sides, just return to your unbroken stream of breath and feel any tingling or pulsing anywhere in the body. When we were seated, we kind of broke the body up into these different segments, but the sun salutation has a way of integrating, hopefully, hopefully integrating everything. Okay, so here's where you get your prop, your floppy pillow or your folded up blanket. And you're just gonna set this on top of your head. I know this isn't the first time we've done this goofy practice, but here we are again. The feet again are about hips width apart. But this time I'm gonna walk you through uh, what's called the Wuji stance. This is a, from Qigong. So I'll show you from the side. In Wuji, we are seeking out neutral in all of our joints. We're seeking out a way to stand where all of our joints are um, happy or as content as they can be. So let's start at the heels or at the ankle joint. And I want you to rock your weight slightly back to your heels so that it feels like the tension across your ankle joint disappears. There's your neutral. And you'll need to keep adjusting this as we go up the body because adjustments up the body will affect down the body as well. So then unlock your knees. Feel neutral in through your knees. Take a slight tuck to the pelvis so that the back of your pelvis gets long, but at the same time, the back of your skull, the occiput where we pulled and tossed energy from, extend that up into your pillow, up into the ceiling. Let your shoulders just hang, or sorry, arms hang just off the shoulders, elbows slightly bent, wrists slightly bent, fingers relaxed. And then you might need to shift the whole thing a little bit, forward, back, side, side. We can even get very specific here into the eyes. So your gaze, whatever you're looking at gets soft. And there's a slight Mona Lisa smile to the face. So this is something that you can continue to explore as long as you have a body and can stand. But you could even find Wuji in other positions, you know, looking for that principle of neutral. Okay, so notice that there is the least amount of tension possible across your joints. That's what we want, this, this kind of ease in the joints. And for contrast, Let's go back to Tadasana, the mountain pose. So push the feet into the floor, straighten the knees, push the top of your head up into your pillow, right? Arms down by your sides. So feel the tension through the whole line of the, each leg and along the spine and down from the shoulder to the fingertips. And then soften it again into the Wuji stance. So feeling the weight shift to the heels, unlock the knees, slight tuck to the pelvis, lengthen through the back of your skull, bend the elbows and wrists and fingers a little bit. So let's inhale here, then exhale back into the tense uh, mountain pose. Then inhale, soften into the Wuji stance, exhale, ignite into the Tadasana mountain pose. So go back and forth that way. And I want you to visualize as you do this, visualize the sea creatures who move through the ocean like this, you know, like a, an octopus or a squid. This is propulsion propulsion-like movement. So they soften and let the water swirl around them and then they push 
the water away. Soften, let it come in, and then push it away. So as you breathe in, right, this is that drawing in and then pushing the energy out. Breathe it in, push the energy out. So now you're acting just like a sea creature. Letting the ocean filter through you. Let's do that just a couple more times. We call this the ripple. Okay, and then we'll remove the, the pillow or the prop, whatever you're using, and come back into your Wuji stance. So weight back in your heels, knees unlocked, slight tuck to the pelvis, back of your skull long, arms hanging from the shoulders, elbows slightly bent, wrists, fingers soft, eyes soft, and a slight smile if you can manage it. So now we're going to bring in visualization of energy movement. We begin by focusing on the feet. Imagine for a moment that the feet are encased in blocks of ice that's melting. As that ice melts, it forms pools of water all around your feet. And that water is sinking through the floor beneath you into the earth down below, forming rivers of water. See those rivers of water turning into roots, roots that extend from your feet through the floor into the earth, down, 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 around other roots, around rocks and pipes and waterways and whatever else is there, all the way down to the center of the earth. And see those roots, just like roots of a tree, pulling in, drawing in the energy of the earth. Let's give that earth energy a color color of gold, like the, the wheat-like color of my, my carpet here. So that as you breathe in, you draw that energy in to the feet, the legs, and the belly. And as you breathe out, you send that energy back down into the earth. Like a straw, you're pulling it into the low dantian low belly, sending it back out as you exhale, pulling it in, sending it out, pulling it in. And you can do the ripple here too, slight ripple, pulling it in and then sending it back out, pulling it in. Sending it back out. Now this time when you pull it in, I want you to keep it at the low dantian. So you inhale earth energy through the legs into the belly, exhale, store it. Inhale earth energy through the legs into the belly, exhale, store it. And each time you exhale and you store it at the low dantian, visualize like a little ember that it's starting to glow brighter and bigger, more saturated. So now you've got this golden wheat color filling up the low belly, the legs, filling up the lower abdominal organs. filling up the upper torso, the chest, 
heart, lungs. Visualize this golden earth energy extending into the arms, the hands, and upward through the neck and head. Each inhale draws it in from the earth. Each exhale, it glows brighter, bigger, filling you up. And now your physical body can't even hold it. It starts to seep through your pores into the space around you. An inch from your skin. maybe a foot. Maybe three feet. Visualize filling up the entire part of the room in front of you from floor to ceiling. and the entire part of the room behind you from floor to ceiling. And the entire room to your left and right from floor to ceiling. Anything above you and around you so the whole room is now glowing. This wheat colored healing light. Now open your arms like you're about to hug a great big grandfather tree. And let's concentrate that beautiful earth energy that light between the hands. So see it as glowing brighter and more saturated between your two hands and start to bring the hands closer to each other. As the hands grow closer, that golden color grows brighter. Pretty soon as the hands Come closer together. It's like you've got a ball that is as bright as the sun. You might even, as you pulse the, the hands in towards each other, you might feel that heat that we described at the beginning of class that pulsing, tingling, maybe even an itching feeling. We're going to take that ball of energy, that golden earth energy. We're going to bring it slowly back into the low belly, draw it in. Shrink it, now the size of a baseball and then a golf ball. A gumdrop. And then let your hands rest one on top of the other, just over your belly, storing that brilliant, brilliant pinpoint of earth energy just behind your navel. Know that it's always there. And let's slowly bring the feet together. Taking a moment to feel your body from toe to head.
And then in any way that is suited to you, create a gesture of gratitude. We are grateful for this earth energy. Okay. So that's our practice today. Reminder that we were working with physical and then um, massage or brushing and then visualization, all to move energy and hopefully to feel better. So I really appreciate you um, taking care of yourself in this way. And I hope that this helps you have a wonderful day. Thank you.